morning. Sorry about being late. Yeah, you are. Not really. Yeah. <laughs> I've been in Jeremiah 14. No, um, it's just amazing how God speaks to us, and you know. Um, what I have this morning goes along the same lines as what Lou was talking about. And, and, and um, you know, it's just, uh, th this came from my normal reading. I'm, I'm, I'm going from, from the beginning and just going through the Bible. And, and yesterday when I read this, I was like, wow, Lord. Um, it's just, it just hits right there. Um, and, and it, you know, it's amazing because we don't pick messages to, point at people or to single people out, but yet that's the way God does because it's what's going on in our lives. And and and, and as you read, he just reveals things to you. And, and so um that being said, um this this is this is a, a a pretty powerful story in Jeremiah of what what's going through. Um some of the background of it um you know, I'm I'm actually going even back to Deuteronomy. You know, when when the people were about to enter the land, and and, and Moses Moses was giving them the final his, the final uh, you know his final talk to them before his death. Um, and um, Jeremiah 30 is I I read that and I stand on it. You know those. The, the, the word is within you and it's written in your heart. But then, but then right after that, he says, what I'm telling you this day is, is what I'm giving you this day is blessings or curses. You know, if you follow me, if you give your heart to me, I'm going to bless you. There's going to be abundance in the land. But yet, if you turn from me, if you turn to idols, if you start doing these things I'm telling you not to do, there is curses in here. And, and uh, what Jeremiah was there, the prophet, he was he was telling them what was about to happen because the, this this uh, this people have fallen and they've fallen so far, and so that's where we're at today. Um, so at verse ten, uh, Jeremiah fourteen ten. This is what the Lord says about this people: They love to wander and they do not restrain their feet. Don't we see so much of that today? People are just out there doing whatever they want. They love to wander, and there's no restraint. There's no restraint. It's almost like they turned off the morality in their life, and they do and say whatever, whatever even comes. To them. <laughs> yeah, even at church, it's it, it's it's just amazing. Um, but the Lord says it's going to be like this. But this this is this is really hard. But but if we know our history, we know what happened through this, and what Jeremiah was warning them. Um, and and so uh, they they love to wander and they do not restrain their feet. So the Lord does not accept them, and He will now remember their wickedness and punish them for their sins. Then the Lord said to me, "Do not pray for the well-being of this people. Although they fast, I will not listen to their cry. Though they offer burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. Instead, I will destroy them with sword, famine, and plague. This is powerful and this is harsh, but this is how far the people have fallen. 13. But I said, Ah, sovereign Lord, the prophets keep telling them, You, you will not see the sword or suffer famine. Indeed, I will give you a lasting peace in this place. You know what? We see this in the world. You know, people are flocking to pe preachers and churches that are telling people what they want to hear. Oh, it's all good. Oh, you know what? It's legal to do this. It's okay. It must be okay. Just because a law has been passed and, and, and we are allowed to do things doesn't mean we should be in them. You know, Nevada... Nevada prostitution is legal. Should we all go do this now? No. You know, um, this nation's passing laws that things can happen. Do, should we go out and do these things just because it's legal now? No. It's just showing you how far and how far things are straying from God's word. 
And, and people are being misled. People are being misled. And this is what uh, Lou was talking about this morning. We, we need to be in our word or we're going to be misled. The, the enemy prowls about like a roaring lion seeking who he can devour. With just enough, just enough of this word, just enough of it to twist it and distort it and to make people think, oh, he mentioned Jesus. It must be okay. I, I can follow him and listen to him because he mentioned Jesus, but yet it's not okay. The, the world is teaching us that we uh, all paths lead to God. All religions believe in the God. Yeah, you know what? Creation, creation screams out God, but yet there is only one way to him. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, the life, and no one comes to the Father but by me. There is only one way to God. There is only one way to get to Him. Not many paths. Everything in creation points to God. Of course it does. He's in everything. But there is only one way to be reconciled to Him. 14. Then the Lord said to me, The prophets are prophesying lies in my name. And I have not sent them or anointed them or spoken to them. They are prophesying to you false visions and divination and idolatries and delusions of their own mind. Therefore, this is what the Lord says about the prophets who are prophesied in my name. I did not send them, yet they are saying no sword or famine will touch this land. Those same prophets will perish by the sword and famine. And I can go into, uh, and, and the same thing's going to happen to the people. Um, I'm not going to go any deeper in this because, this, I mean, what's here is a mouthful, and I could, I could take up the rest of the day in this. But, but know what Jeremiah was coming to tell them was happening. They're about to be overthrown. The, the things that happened to this people um, was promised in Deuteronomy 30. They're gonna. They're, they they were. The famine got so bad that they were actually eating each other. They were going to cannibalism because that's the only thing they had. They were they were overthrown by another nation and carried off to Babylon in captivity. The city left in utter ruins and destroyed. And but God told them it was going to happen, and He sent Jeremiah to tell them it was going to happen, and they wanted to kill Jeremiah. They all had itchy ears. They wanted to hear the goodness, and they wanted to stay. They knew what they were doing wrong. We know what we're doing wrong. We know. The Word is written in our heart. We have a conscience. We know. We know what these truths are. are, are. And, and the world is going to tell us things. The world is going to try and deceive us, to draw us away. But yet, the only way is to stand firm in this Word and to spend time in it then we get discernment from the Lord. And the, and, and the things we hear, the things He puts in our mind, are not going to go against His Word. And so we can compare it. We can compare what we're hearing to the Word. It's not going to go against, because God is never going to go against Himself. And God has never changed. God is not changing. Yes, the old laws, the old things when people were doing them, the, a, lot of, a lot of the laws, a lot of adultery and a lot of the stuff, they were taken outside the city and stoned to death. But we are fortunate that we live in a time of grace. But yet sometimes that's our undoing because now because of grace we don't see all the times the repercussions from them things. But yet, mark my words, the Bible tells us there is going to come a time where this world is going to be judged, where wrath and tribulation is going to be poured out in this world, and this world is going to be destroyed. The Bible tells us heaven and earth will fade away, but my words will remain forever. Everything we see around us is going to be destroyed. It's not going to last. Only, only eternal things. And God is still going to pour a judgment out on this world. But we... Even though we have this grace, we can't just go out and do as we please. His law still stands. There still is a price to pay. You know, and a lot of times, I said we don't always see, but yet our lives fall apart when we don't walk in this life. We, we see it on a personal level, but we don't see it on a mass level like, 
like in the old days, but it's going to happen. And like I say, the only way is to trust in this word. This word brings life. This word is going to guard us from all the deception that's walking around, all the false teachers. If we stay in this word, we have life. And so, back to the same old thing I always talk about. Trust in him. Give him your heart. Seek him with all your heart. Turn from the ways of the world. Turn from the things we think we need to grab onto and hang on to. Let go. Let go. There's freedom in this life. That's what this is about. It's about clinging to God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, with all of our strength. Let Him be our all. Father, we just we thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We see so many things and, and you know, people are getting caught up in Lord and with fine sounding arguments, Lord, and yet we would be caught up in them too. We're not strong enough. People throughout history weren't strong enough. They're only strong when they're in you, Lord, when they're standing firm in you, when they're seeking you, when they're spending time in you. Yes, Lord, we make mistakes, but yes, when we come to you and repent of those mistakes, we are forgiven. Lord, we just we thank you, Father. We thank you for this grace we live in. But Lord, don't let us be caught up in it, Lord, that that um that we can hide our sin in, in your grace, Lord. Let us see the things that are drawing us away. And reveal them to us, Lord, that we may let go of them and trust in you, Lord. That we would trust in you, Lord. Father, um, these offerings we lay before you, Lord, let them be an offering of our heart. Of our heart, let him go, Lord. Let him go and trust in you, Lord. Father, you know the hearts, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, that you bless the giver, bless those who cannot give, Lord. It's the heart you're after, Lord, and I pray you would see our heart and know where our heart's at, Lord. Father, bless this offering and multiply it to further your kingdom, Lord. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen.